Hello, hello everyone. Good evening. It's Word Wednesday and today we have Luke chapter 8 which says Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city, the village, preaching and bringing the glad, the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and a certain woman who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the, of the air devoured it. Now some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell, some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones fell among thorns are those who, when her have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who having heard the word with the noble, I'll let the cop there go by. <laughs> We're gonna go back to verse 14. Now the ones that fell among the thorn are those who when have heard it go out and are choked with cares riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity but the ones that fell on the good ground are those who have having heard the word with a noble and good heart keep it and bear fruit with patience no one when he has lit a lamp covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light for nothing is secret that will not be that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Therefore, take heed how you hear, for whoever has to him, more will be given, and whoever does not have, even he, what he seems to have will be taken from him. Then his mother and brothers came to him and could not approach him because of the crowd. And it was told to him by someone who said, your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered and said to them, my brother, my, my mother and my brother are those who hear the word of God and do it. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep and a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him awoke him and saying master master we are perishing then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they seized and there was a calm but he said to them where is your faith and they were afraid and marveled saying to one another who can this be for he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him then they sailed to the country of the Gaiterness, which is the opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? 
I beg you, do not torment me. For he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would com not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there from the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them. And he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd ran violently down into the steep place, into the lake and drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also, who had seen it, told them by what means he who had been demon-possessed was healed. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear, and he got into the boat and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. Excuse me. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city that great things Jesus had done for him. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But, at, but as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman, having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press against you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And when he said to her daughter, be of good cheer, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be made well. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter and James and John and the father and mother of the girl now all wept and mourned for her but he said do not weep she is not dead but sleeping and they ridiculed him knowing that she was dead but he put them all outside took her by the hand called saying little girl arise then her spirit returned and she arose immediately and he commanded that she be given something to eat and her parents were astonished but he charged them to tell no one what had happened Whew. wow that was a lot <laughs> a lot of miracles jesus was performing amen just in this chapter alone right <laughs> let's go back to the um towards the beginning okay so we have the sower right the seeds and he, he um, explained what each seed meant, right? He said, the ones, the seed is the word of God. And the ones, the ones where it fell by the wayside are the ones who hear it. Then the devil comes and takes the word out of their hearts, okay? That they will not believe. The ones on the rock are those who hear, receive, 
but they don't have any root planted in, in Jesus, okay? So since they have no root, they believe for now, but then when the temptation comes and when, when troubles come, then they don't believe anymore, okay? Um, the ones who fell on the thorns, when, um, when they have heard it, go out and are choked because they are worried about the world, the riches, the money, the, the pleasures of this life. And the ones that fell on good ground are the ones who hear it, keep it, and bear fruit and patience, okay? We are, we are grounded in our faith and belief on Jesus, knowing that he is God, can do all things. We are not scared. We are not um, moved when things might happen in our life. Our faith is not shaken. Our belief in God is not shaken. We know no matter what, we're okay, and things happen for a reason, and we are blessed and highly favored regardless in Jesus name now no one lights a lamp and covers it right we are the light of the world so God doesn't want us to be hidden we are to be out here spreading our light shining bright for all to see we are not to, supposed to be um, hiding our light or trying to hide our light or staying inside all the time in a closet in the house no one can see the light the light is inside it's under a basket it's under a vessel no one can see it but when we go outside we are shining our light bright everyone can see us we're spreading the word we're spreading god's love when we are walking in our authority we're spreading our light so that all may see the glory of god hallelujah now when his mother and brother was asking to see him but they couldn't because the crowd was there he told the people who is my mother and my brothers they are the ones who hear the word of god and follow it and do it okay so the people of god the children of god we are his family that's what he was saying we are the family people who are not even if they are so cold in our bloodline in our family they are not our family because our true family believe in god follow god and are children of god okay that is our family okay all right excuse the noise in the background there are people playing in the pool <laughs> um now they were in a boat and a storm came right the boat started filling with water the winds are going everywhere it's crashing around they, they started being frightened and scared forgetting what jesus had done forgetting who jesus was they were like we're gonna die we're gonna die they woke him up they're like yo we're gonna die we need you to help us get up and he was like, he, he calmed the storm, everything stopped. And he said, he said, where is your faith? Where is your faith? You are walking around with me this whole time. You see all the miracles I have done. You know who I am. Where's your faith? Did you forget what I have done? Do you not know who I am? Do you not know that I can calm the sea? Do you not know that I can make us get to land like that? Do you know, not know I could part the Red Sea because I am the one who helped Moses to do it when he when he stuck that 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 um, stick. I forgot what it's called. I can't think of the word right now. But when he put that in the ground and the sea parted and they were able to walk through. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> God doesn't even need a stick. He he speaks and things happen. He moves his hand and things happen. OK, he's like, where's your faith? <laughs> I'm doing all these miracles. You are right there beside me and you can't even believe. You can't even not be worried. And then they said, who is this? Because he commands the winds and the water. They obey him. The, the earth obeys God. Wow. He is obeyed. Anything and everything. When he says to do this and do that, they do it. They follow him and they, they marvel. <laughs> of course they marvel, but they should know who he is already okay now there was a there was um demons right he said that the name was legion because there was many demons inside this person as soon as the demon saw jesus he fell down and said what have i to do with you jesus i beg you do not torment me like i know who you are this demons and demonic spirits they know who we are they see our light they know exactly who we are okay so when they saw jesus they said oh snap He's here on earth walking. Please do not torment me. Do not just throw me into hell. Please, please throw us into these, into the pigs, please. And he said, all right, I'll, I'll do that. He casted out the demon from the guy and told them to go into the pigs. When they went in the pigs, the pigs ran into the lake and drowned themselves, okay? The people saw it, were afraid, and they were like, you need to go. 
because we don't know what you're capable of doing. If you can do that, I don't want to see what else you can do. Okay, the people were afraid, thinking, what? I, I don't know. Like, he's not going to do anything bad to the people. But I guess they were just afraid because those who do not believe do not understand. So, there's that. Then we have the woman with the issue of blood. Okay, 12 years this woman was dealing with a menstrual cycle non-stop where she was bleeding. She became weak and weary, lightheaded. She went to so many doctors, wasting all of her money, trying to figure out a cure for her disease that she was going through. She went everywhere and was losing hope. Then she heard about Jesus and who he was and what he was doing. She found hope and said, wow, if I can go and touch this man, I can be healed. So she went on a journey, okay? She went on a journey. And when she went, she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately the power of God went straight to her and healed her of her sickness. Hallelujah. It was so powerful. The Lord felt his power go from his body and said, who touched me? The disciples are like, all these people are around pushing and shoving and we're like bumping into each other and you're asking who touched you? And he's like, no, I felt the power come through me. Someone touched me. So she came forth scared and told him, I'm the one who touched you. I did it because I'm going through this. And as soon as I touched you, I became healed. And he said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well go in peace. Hallelujah. He wasn't mad. He was glad. And he was, um, it was a great thing that she was able to tell in front of the whole multitude that he had healed just from her touching, touching the hem of his garment. She became healed and all there saw it. Everyone who was there saw and heard the things of Jesus. Hallelujah. He didn't even need to do anything. He was just standing there in his power and authority, in his anointing, because he is God. <laughs> and she was made healed just, just from that. Hallelujah. I might touch a little bit more on this on Friday. God willing, we, we'll see. Now, there was a, a little girl, right? I believe they said she was 12 years old. Um... She was sick, and they, when Jesus came, they said, Do not trouble the teacher, for she is dead. Right? But Jesus said, Do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. They told her, People were crying and weeping because she was dead. And he said, Don't weep, don't cry. She's not dead, she's sleeping. And there's, there was people that were there that mocked and laughed. Like, yeah, okay, she's she's sleeping, she's clearly dead. So he said, okay, you, 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 everyone who doesn't believe, you gotta go, get out. So he got all the people out. Once the people were out, he was able to heal her because he got the unbelief out and all those who were there. You believe and it will be done, okay? Little girl arise and her spirit returned, okay? Because we have a spirit living inside of our body. When we die, our spirit goes. Okay, it goes back to the Father. Now, he says the Spirit came back. Spirit, arise, right? Uh, little girl arise, Spirit returned, and she arose immediately. And then he said, give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished. They were shocked. Wow, you just raised my daughter from the dead. She was dead, and you just made her alive again. I'm pretty sure they, they were so blessed and thankful. They... I couldn't imagine. Now, take all these scenarios and I want you to apply it to your life because we can find in these healings, in these miracles, how God can also do that for us because he is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He is that same God, yesterday, today, and forever. So he has never changed and he never will. So when you look at this, see yourself in these and know 
that God can always come through for you in Jesus name. If you have anything to add that I have not said, please do so in the comments. Iron sharpens iron. If you have any testimony, I would love to hear it. Please tell me in the, in the comments. I would love to hear any testimony you may have. I pray you all have a blessed and wonderful day and I love you all.